cash or grass, no one rides for free. Thumbs up. I'm David Cho, we're going cross country, we're going across America. We accept uh, all rides for free, hopping trains, hitchhiking on cars, flying on planes, we're just not going to pay for any of them. Um, last time I did this was uh, during the grunge period in the early 90s, so it's been a while and uh, I only almost got raped twice and so hopefully that won't happen. But I was like a lot skinnier and sexier then. And you know, a lot of like sexual abuse victims, like they put on weight to make themselves feel like unattractive and like unsexy. So hopefully they'll leave us alone this time. I'm bringing uh, Harry Kim, this is my nephew. Um, we'll see how far the two of the baddest gooks in K-Town can get across this white America um, by any means possible. Right now we're in the LA train yard and we're gonna head east and just keep going. We should uh, investigate uh, which train's leaving next. Like, you know, sometimes I come back from uh, train hopping trips and people are like, hey, did you bring me a souvenir? You're on vacation? It's like, there's no gift shops really. But what is cool is when you walk along the tracks um, and you see a piece of crap, it's not dog crap, that's human crap. And a lot of times it's over 100 years old. It's a little nice souvenir for friends and family. <laughs> this isn't CSI or anything, but Basically what happened here was he took a dump here and then he wiped his ass on the wall right there. <laughs> and then he used this rock and this plant which is covered in shit <laughs> to wipe his ass. Yeah! We're having uh, a little bit of a rough time getting out of Los Angeles because they're all heading to San Diego and we don't want to go to Tijuana. We're here with uh, Chicago. He was walking his dog out here earlier. And what's, what's going on with the train yard situation out here? Well, they're real anal. You know, it's like the cops, they're real dickheads because they're not real cops. Right. So they try to do as much as they have, uh, enforcing they can. So they'll find you the first time 100 bucks. No warning, no nothing. If you're from out of town, they'll definitely slap you with fine. Each. Right. Okay. And then the second time, you go to jail. Okay. So if we want to go to Vegas, we got to go that way. No, you want to start that way and it'll bend up there. Okay. I just oh. came back from Vegas yesterday. From the hot the train? Yeah, I went to the Star Trek convention thing. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a nerd. You like Vulcan stuff? I love everything. What, why do you like Star Trek? It's um, the way we should be as a society. There's no money involved. You know, uh, you actually do the job that you were born for. So how was it? How was, it was the convention? Great. What fucking awesome. I got laid by this Klingon chick in full Klingon outfit, which was like unbelievable. Awesome. I mean, gotta try it. Klingon sex. Angry. Be careful of the little towns though. Okay. Those really? people are all crazy, man. They're all inbred, they all know each other, and they will fuck you up. So you gotta be careful. People will try to hustle you out of whatever you got. Don't ever, ever trust anyone on your little I got, adventure. I got Blacky Chan right here. You got each other, but you're not <laughs> always going to be there, dude. You know? Just, I'm telling you. So, yeah, be careful, guys. All right. Have a safe trip. If you're out here tonight, man, I'll hang out with you guys. You know, until the right uh, We caught a, hopped a freight out here. Uh, it slowed down, so we jumped out. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, here we are at the Burger Den in beautiful Yermo. California it is uh, pretty much the halfway mark between Vegas and Los Angeles. Any cops we should watch out for? Or? Just probably yeah. snakes, man. And what about train hopping around here? Just be careful, man. I've never done that, so I can't say how dangerous it is. But have you heard anything? Uh, yeah, man. Bums are dying and stuff. Bums are dying. <laughs> Just I don't know why, but I guess they're all train jumpers. Like probably they're all drunk and stuff, but I don't know. All right. Bombs are dying. Be careful. Watch out for snakes. You heard it from Richard at the Burger Den in Yermo. We're stranded in Yermo for a little bit. It's hard. We've been trying to hitch a ride out and we can't seem to get a ride. However, we found this abandoned uh, hotel that looks like it's being renovated and it's nice and warm in here. And it uh, doesn't look like anyone's gonna fuck with us, so I guess this is, this is home for tonight. We try to sleep at uh, the little construction site hotel in Yermo and they uh, 
they kicked us out. Some highway patrolman came by at like four in the morning. So we walked a mile out. I think this place is called the Calico Ghost Town. This fucking guy decided to get sick last night. I want to get going, but I just wanted to leave our mark and uh, we're trying to catch a train out. Hopefully we'll try to make it to Vegas by today. Uh, but we want to destroy this house a little bit. seat in the house and we're uh, basically sitting on a metal conductor for heat and my ass is burning right now it's fucking hot and that's the clickety clack when the force pulls like all of them go doom, 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 doom. and so we're in Yermo we just caught one out to uh, we're heading out towards beautiful Las Vegas I spent uh, probably the last decade and a half of my life being the worst thief on the planet. I uh, had a huge change of heart and a change of thinking in the last few years. I never thought I'd actually be a successful artist, but when I'm selling paintings and making a decent living out of it, I, I gotta ask myself why I'm you know, stealing Starburst from 7-Eleven. So it's more of a habit that was very tough to break and I guess an addiction also. Um, so I filled that void in my life with Christ. And so God is still part of my life right now, but if I'm completely honest, uh, not as big as when I did have the change of heart. And um, slowly yet surely another huge thing that filled my life is gambling. And so gambling is a huge part of my life now. So last time I went to Vegas, I was uh, delivering uh, custom made shorts for a UFC fighter. It's a long story, but basically there was like a dead hooker in front of his room and he was frazzled. And uh, my friend gave me some money to put on the fight and he lost money on the fight with the leftover money that I wasn't able to put on the fight. I went to the Venetian and I went to the high rollers room and I won $40,000. And so I guess I'm considered a high roller and they've been calling me ever since. They want their money back basically. So I figure we're pretty fucking dirty, we're pretty tired. Might as well uh, milk our opportunities. Hi Yvonne, this is uh, David Cho. Uh, I haven't been back there since uh, probably a few months and I was wondering if it's too late to uh, cash in on one of those rooms. Wow, thank you. Thumbs up. I guess we're gonna go from rags to riches. They got us a pretty nice room over there at the Venetian for free because they want their money back. Hopefully I can remain cool and not become a degenerate gambler and blow our entire budget for the trip in one night. We barely made it out of Los Angeles. Hopefully we'll make it out of Sin City. Our train just stopped in the literally middle of nowhere. Harry's sick and he's almost out of water. You know, the, it's very important to stay hydrated out here in the desert. Yep. So if he is to pass out, I will piss in his mouth. Keep waking up. How you feeling? You Keep champ? me hydrated. Feeling better? Yep, feeling good. Okay. We just stopped and uh, we saw an open box car when the train was turning, so that might be a more uh, enjoyable ride. It'll be a change of pace, you know. Complain to the concierge, get a different room. It has taken us um, over 16 hours to get halfway through from LA to Vegas. We're in a place called Kelso right now. It's still about 200 miles from Vegas. Uh, what people don't understand is during the 1920s and 30s, like the railroads built on the backs of Chinese and blacks this is the spine of this country. This is the backbone, like everywhere the train went, that's where little towns popped up. You drive cross country in a car, you see the 10 freeway, you go through from LA to Miami, you hit all these towns, 7-Eleven, Circle Ks, but you go on the train, you go through some places that time has not touched in 50, 60, 100 years, some backwards towns, some of the most beautiful, amazing things you've ever seen in your life. This is one of the last American frontiers, I think. As every year goes by, it gets more and more harder to do this kind of traveling, but it's a great way to see America. Beautiful 
lost wages. We just hopped a box car out here. And uh, I think there's a room waiting for us at the Venetian, so uh, it's time to gamble. Oh, it's, it's nice out here. Let's do it. We're in uh, beautiful Las Vegas again. Uh, we just walked from the train tracks over to uh, the Venetian Hotel. And uh, I'm going to get my free room and hopefully get a manicure, a pedicure, and a sauna and a happy ending and all the good stuff and uh, let's go here luxury because it is comped and it's free and I worked hard losing money to get that comp and I don't, I'm not comped anywhere else so this will be it before we head off to the on, on the road again it's our one uh, you know our one hurrah Familiar story, lost it all, took a cash advance out on my credit card to get back to even money, lost it all, I am the biggest loser, I want to sleep till 2007 or, or just do a two hour drum solo. That's how it goes, one minute you're up, one minute you're down. Down and out in Las Vegas, I guess fortunes change. So the situation is, we found out this morning that we weren't comped for a second room. Uh, my 20 minutes of play doesn't get me two nights. Fortunately, I have a friend from high school that uh, became a pit boss at the uh, lovely and beautiful Golden Palm Resort and Casino, which is pretty much a dump and pretty much only known for its uh, karaoke, which is pretty fucking awesome. Wow, I'm, I, I don't know what to say because, okay, so we come into the karaoke night, we find Lee who takes care of all the odds and ends around the Golden Palm, but he's working in a tiny office that has a samurai sword, all these like video monitor cameras, and the guy is also sleeping on the floor and unbelievably does the best Bob Dylan I've ever heard. Quite a performer. What are you doing here? I am the hotel electrician. I'm the uh resident musician. Uh, I'm past my third marriage. My daughter's 24. She's in the United States Navy. Were you in the Navy? Yeah, I'm third generation Navy. I, uh, I am a performer of Petty Miracles. Okay. I played uh, bass guitar since I was uh, 18. Right. Took two lessons from uh, Jerry Garcia, yeah. but I enjoy the karaoke for us. Well, tell me, tell me a little bit about the, uh, I mean, tell me the world of karaoke. Is it, is it a harsh world? Do people know you in the karaoke circuit? A lot of a lot of live musicians at point in time in the past I had not actually rehearsed music taking it into the band right. then the band would say well we don't think you can really do that song or we don't think we can do it but with karaoke the CD disc is always going to play the same it's always going to be there it's not going to talk back to you it's never going to be late wow. they don't get drunk only thing you can do is do it worse or better right make a decision, I'm never going to do that song again, or yes, that's a keeper. All right, let's hear from St. Juvain, everybody. The one plus side to the scalding hot weather in the daytime is actually at nighttime, it's pretty nice and pleasant. So Eric, my friend, uh, is letting us sleep by the pool without anyone bothering us. And uh, the security guard is keeping the hookers away from uh, pickpocketing us while we sleep. It's a nice night out. We'll uh, wake up and take a bath in the jacuzzi and pitch out of uh, Vegas tomorrow and hopefully get the fuck out of this town because I've been here way too long. Uh, 
I apologize in advance if I seem irritable today. Uh, me and Harry slept by the pool at the Golden Palm last night and uh, was rudely awoken by the sun in our face. It is day four. I want to get the fuck out of Vegas. This is really the city of lost wages. Our goal today is to at least make it to Arizona, New Mexico, if possible. This place sucks. We're going to make ourselves a sign right now. We're standing out here with a street sign. This is towards Arizona. These motherfuckers just want to get home from work. It's Friday afternoon. They want to get home, do their drugs, get fucked, and watch TV. That sounds like what you want to do. No, I'm around the street walking. Oh, okay. I'm out here just like you are. You should come with us. I got a job, though. You don't think anyone's going to pick us up? I hope you guys get to where you're going. I do. I'm pulling for you. But in reality, no one's going to pick you up. Okay. High five. Golden rule is to smile while you're hitchhiking. No one likes a sourpuss face. You smile. You look like a nice guy. There's a ride right there. Very sweet talk to a nice lady. Yes. Gracias. Thanks for giving us a ride. We appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Were you scared? No. Okay. No. Only when the police came. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. One thing I forgot about fear and hitchhiking is when you're hitchhiking and uh, you talk to the people and you say, hey, how about a lift? And they're in the lane to get on the freeway and, you know, they say obvious lies like, oh, I'm not getting on the freeway. I'm going straight. And it's obvious that you're not going straight. It's weird because you start to build this hatred and resentment towards people and you're like, why you lie, man? Why the fuck are you lying to me? It's obvious you're getting on the freeway, you just don't want to give me a ride. You're like, hey man, just be real, just be honest with me. But then what would their honest reasons be? It's like, and then in life, when are people really honest with you anyways? Oh no, I don't want to give you a ride because you smell and you're dirty and you're chinky. And then you think about it for yourself if it was the reverse situation. If I'm honest with myself, I don't want to pick them up because they're dirty and they sweat and I don't want them in my car. But who wants to say that so I have no one to be uh, angry at with except for myself and Harry <laughs> she's going our direction but I have no idea do you have your flashlight Harry oh shit dude okay so basically we just got a ride from a, a nice lady and uh, it's a van it's hot a little bit hot in the back we're heading east we don't, we, we don't know which, where, I, this is sort of scary actually. Yeah, this van is <laughs> I've never gotten a ride in a van like, that's like, uh, no windows. But it did totally say, God dark. bless America. And uh, there was only like, white power. Yeah, two like scary guys that I saw in the back. So I think we're all good. So that's our way out right there. There's no way we could find out where we are or anything that's outside. The windows are black. All the lights are taken out. What do you think this is? It feels like an arm. <laughs> Dude, it's someone's arm. <laughs> hey. Hey, are you right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the last person's close. The last person who got picked up, they just left that here. If this is the last you ever hear from me, mom and dad, uh, I love you very much. And uh, I uh, tried my best to be the best son I could. To my girlfriend, Milan, I love you very much. I'm sorry I was like the worst boyfriend ever. Can you guys hear me? Hello? 